Create a new document. Change the units to inches. Set the width to 11, the height to 8.5, and the resolution to 300. I have here my figure ground letter composition, saved as a PNG. I'm going to drag and drop it straight into the Photoshop canvas. I want to make sure that it's saved as a PNG so that the letters are black and everything else is clear. Head over to the Layers panel and right click Rasterize Layer on the Initials layer. Hover over the top ruler and click and drag to bring down a guideline. We will use this as our horizon line. Drag it to about two thirds of the way down the canvas, or about 5.6 inches. Press Ctrl T to enter transform mode and then right click free transform. We're going to widen these letters until they fill the width of the canvas and then we're going to squish it down until the top matches up with the guideline. Go over to the left ruler and click and drag out a vertical guideline. You can choose either left or right, but this guideline should be one third of the distance between the side of the canvas. Here I'm going with left. Our vanishing point will be at the intersection of these two guidelines. Press Ctrl T to enter back into transform mode and then right click perspective. As I click and drag one of the top corners, it looks like the letters are receding off into the distance. As I move my cursor, we can see that the skew angle changes. I can change that up top. I'm going to enter 60 degrees. If I click and drag the center handle, I can now line this up with our vanishing point where the horizontal and vertical grid lines intersect. Okay, so now we want to add people into this scene walking on the areas shaded in black. But I can hear you asking, where Kevin? Where can I find images of people to put in this scene? Well, let me show you. Tutorialception! Find an image with people in it. Google's a good resource. You could also use a picture of yourself. Make sure you can clearly differentiate between the subject and their background. Duplicate the background layer by pressing Ctrl J and hiding the background layer. You can always go back to this if you mess up. Use the marquee tool to drag a rectangular selection box around the subject in your image. Press Ctrl I to select the inverse of what you have selected. Then press delete to delete everything except your subject. Press Ctrl D to deselect. Use the polygonal lasso tool to cut away the background just a little bit closer to your subject. Set the feather width on your lasso tool to something like one pixel. Now you can use the polygonal lasso and the regular lasso tool to cut away the rest of the background from your subject. Oh boy, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Wait a minute, I have an idea. Warp speed, activate. <laughs> Oh, hey, good, that worked for you too. Now you've got a nice cutout that you can use in all of your scenes. Put a black rectangle behind it to see if you missed anything. You can always go back and touch it up later. Looks good! With the cutout layer selected, I'm going to drag and drop this back into our figure ground scene. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit to establish the scale of this scene. If you have other cutouts, drag and drop them too. Yay, it's a party! If you collect enough of them, you can take over the world. I want to make sure that the receding figures follow the rules of perspective, so I'm going to drag another horizontal guideline through the eye line of the figure in front. Now each figure that I bring into the scene will have their eye lines intersecting with this secondary grid line and their feet touching the ground wherever they're standing. So now we need trees, right? How do you go about getting trees? You guessed it. Tutorial set. No, 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 don't do that. Trees are very difficult and time consuming to cut out properly. Just do an image search for tree and people PNG cutouts that you can use to build your own digital library. Now you can treeify your scene with all your tree NGs. Just drag and drop them into the Photoshop canvas and figure out where you want them to go. And don't forget to scale them up. Trees are big. If you want to make a copy of any object, have the layer selected and hold down Alt as you click and drag. Now my background tree is in front of my foreground tree. That's not right. 
Go to the Layers panel and drag the layer into a position underneath the foreground tree. Now it makes sense. Lower the opacity on these trees just by a little bit, maybe about 10% each. Not only is this going to make poorly cut out trees look even better, but it also helps to establish a further sense of depth in the overall scene. Great, now you can add more trees, make more copies, and play with more opacities. Now pay attention to those layers, trust me, they are your friend. Let's give some definition to the ground plane. Make sure that your letters layer is selected, then press Ctrl T to enter transform mode. Then right click warp. Now when you click and drag it gets all bendy. Give it some uphill portions and some downhill portions. I don't care. It's your imagination. Make sure you adjust any figures or trees so that the whole topography makes sense. Hey, so now that the background is transparent, did you know that we can add in a solid color background? Oh yes, it's no lie. I'm telling the char truth. Use the marquee tool to drag a rectangular selection box across the entire canvas. Then go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. You can set it to anything you want. Maybe in this case, not black or white. Drag this layer to the bottom of the layer stack and whoa, there you go, you got yourself a background. Here's a quick method for displaying your characters in Silhouette. Select the proper layer and make this layer black and white. You can go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White, or you can press Control alt shift b Then you want to go back to Image, Adjustments, and go to Channel Mixer. You want to check Monochrome. If you slide the slider all the way to the right, it'll display the characters in pure white. If you slide the slider all the way to the left, they'll display in pure black. In this case, let's display them in white so they don't blend in with the ground. Lower the opacity to about 80%, then repeat this for all characters in the scene. And that's it, you're done, you made a thing. Feel free to add more characters, more trees, or even some small shrubs around the base of the trees to help them blend in with the ground plane. Sit back and revel in the amazing scene that you've created. Really, you created something amazing. You should be proud.